In this video, I'm going to talk about five common CAD data management mistakes that people make in their PLM or product lifecycle management systems. And four of these deal with the end user and one of them deals with the enterprise. First off, a lot of times people will just use the default names that Creole Parametrics suggests you. They don't give it a real file name. They don't give it a real common name. They just go with the default that pops up in the dialog box. And the problem is, a lot of times I go into the common space of different companies I've worked for, and I'll see that people have checked in parts with names PRT 0001, 0002, 0003, and so forth. Same with assemblies. And then when someone later on uses the same default name that's suggested to them and they try to check into the common space, they are not going to be able to do it because of a name conflict. And the problem is later on, you're going to have to give it a real name and number, especially when you want to release it to manufacturing. So you're going to have to do a rename operation. And if you're using WT parts in addition to CAD documents, now you have two different objects that you have to rename. Do yourself a favor and when you're creating a new part, assembly, or drawing, give it the correct file name and common name. Very similar to the first mistake, a lot of times I'll see people include information in the file name that is already metadata that's captured by Windchill or your PLM system. For example, people will put their initials, and that really, really, really riles me up. They'll put their initials in the file name. They'll put the date that they created it. Maybe they'll put the revision. Maybe they'll put the lifecycle state, like concept or in work or released. They'll put that all in the file name, and that is information that is all tracked by Windchill. And if you ever make a change to your model, so for example, you revise it, well, that revision is no longer going to be correct in the file name. And since Windchill already ca captures all this information, it's already searchable. You don't have to put it in the file name. Use whatever standard naming convention that your company gives you. Third common mistake, Everybody wants a sandbox. And what I mean by sandbox is that everyone wants their own set of folders or maybe even their own personal product in Windchill where they can save all their files and, hey, I'm going to put my stuff here. I don't want other people seeing it. I'm still working on it. I'm not sure I really want this or where this is going to go. So I just want my own sandbox where I can store my files. Well, the problem that with this is that later on, when those objects become real and when they get released and they need to be accessible to everybody, a lot of times people don't move it out of their own sandbox to commonly accessible areas with for that other people can browse to them. Easy thing, just store your files where they're eventually going to go in whatever folders or whatever products or whatever libraries that they're intended to be used in. Next common CAD data management mistake, people never perform housekeeping on their workspaces. Windchill automatically provides you with a number of default workspaces for the different products or libraries that you have access to. And people use those and they never do cleanup work. They'll use the same workspace for months and months or even years on end, just continually adding more objects to it. And I found that sometimes when workspaces become unstable, it's because they're old or they have lots of objects in them. And to avoid instability or potential corruption with those workspaces, my personal rules are that I don't like to keep any workspaces that are older than six months. And six months is a really long time for me to have a workspace. And also once they end up getting a lot of objects, maybe over about 5,000 objects, I don't like them to be around for that long. Also, workspaces can have issues if users are not updating and synchronizing regularly. Updating will get you the latest geometry. Synchronizing will get you the latest metadata. And metadata is information like name and revision and folder and context where it's stored, so forth and so on. 
And if your workspaces become corrupt or unstable, or if you haven't updated and synchronized in a while, you could potentially lose work that you've done. In order to avoid these problems, it's recommended that you create a new workspace for each task. You have to create a new part or update an assembly or maybe make changes to a drawing. Create a new workspace. And personally, I like to name the workspace with information about the date it was created. And that way I can look at the name and see how old it is and say, oh wait, this one's getting kind of old. It's time for me to get rid of that workspace. And when you complete the task, delete the workspace. That way you're always maintaining good housekeeping. And the last common CAD data management mistake to be discussed in this video is one that's typically done by the enterprise and not necessarily the end user. And to explain this one, let's talk about the past history. Back in the past, there used to be this profession called drafter. That is the person who would actually make engineering drawings. But as CAD came about, the role of drafting started being shifted to engineers and designers. Similarly, now that we have product lifecycle management, instead of those tasks being performed by specialists, now those are being shifted onto the engineers and designers. So in the past, there used to be specialists who would manage a lot of the different administrative tasks associated with moving something through its life cycle. And these were tasks like releasing something. In other words, promoting it from one life cycle state to another. And then when changes had to be made, revising it back down to a state in which it could be changed. Also, there are change management tasks that engineers and designers are doing more and more these days. For example, they could be writing problem reports or writing change requests or writing change notices. Also, engineers are doing more bomb management, creating different variations of the bill of materials, maybe making the manufacturing bill of materials or even the purchasing bill of materials, or just making sure that the bill of materials is correct. They also might be doing more deviations and waivers and even getting into supplier management. And the problem with engineers and designers performing these different PLM tasks is that, first off, they might not be that good at it, but more importantly, it's taking them away from the tasks for which they were hired, doing actual engineering and design work. And so for that reason, if you can avoid this mistake at your different companies and enterprises, I highly recommend that you do so. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.